So we talked about some general PHP configuration in our last video. In this video, I wanna talk specifically about PHP FPM's configuration. Now we've seen in the Etsy PHP 7.1 FPM directory, we have the php.ini file, our conf.d file with our symlinks to our PHP modules, but we also have a phpfpm.conf file and a pool.d directory. So we are gonna concentrate on the pool.d, which has configuration for PHP FPM resource pools. So I'm going to list out processes that begin with PHP, and we're going to see we have PHP FPM running, and it's using pool, dub, 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 running as user and group, dub, 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 data. And this configuration for PHP FPM and its master process and the web workers that run as user and group, dub, 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 data for the pool, dub, 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 is configured inside of the pool.d directory. And actually, let's get into that. So we see the dub, dub, dub comp file inside of the pool.d directory. And if we edit this, we can see a little bit of what's going on in here. So first and foremost, its pool name is dub, dub, dub because of the brackets here. The file name is not naming it. It's actually here where it is named dub dub dub. So you can actually name this anything you want. So some important things to note is we can decide what user and group PHP runs as, specifically the web workers. So the user and group is dub 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 data, just like we saw here. If I do that PSAUX and search for PHP command, we'll see that they are running as user and group dub 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 data because of that configuration. So we have the names dub dub dub, we have the user and group that PHP is running as, we have lists in here, and this is what we configured in Nginx, right? So this is a socket file, it is a Unix socket, just like a TCP socket, an IP address and port combination. A Unix socket file can also communicate information to and from a process. It's a little faster on a local server than a TCP socket, not really by much, but a little bit. And because it's a, essentially a file on the local file system, it can't be read remotely. Whereas if this was using a TCP socket, a port and IP address combination. We potentially could open up our server so that Nginx is on a remote server could send PHP FPM requests to this server over a network. I don't you typically do that, uh, but it is something that is possible. So I leave it as a socket file. It's a little bit quicker. I have Nginx installed locally here, and I haven't ever really done a setup where Nginx is sending uh, PHP FPM requests to a remote server. So it's not really ever an issue for me, but this is where you can change that if you want. And this is where you can check to see where the socket file is so you know what to configure in Nginx. So if I do tab E, I'm gonna open up Etsy Nginx sites available in our default site. That specific configuration is here where we define the Unix socket file that it is listening to. So var run PHP 7.1 and that goes to run PHP. Now this isn't var run PHP, but they are actually the same directory because of a symlink. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna check this out, we'll quit here. If I go to cd slash run, that directory exists, and we can go into PHP and run PHP exists. We can also go into the var directory and I'll list it out and we can see that the run directory inside of var run is just a symlink to the base slash run directory. So that's why both var run PHP and just slash run PHP work in those cases. So let's head back to Etsy PHP 7.1 FPM pool.d and we can edit www.conf a little more. The only other thing I'm really going to cover in here is the process management. And I do have a full video on serviceforhackers.com about this, so I will only go into a little bit of detail here. But we typically will use a dynamic process monitoring where PHP FPM will dynamically spin up processes as it needs to to fulfill web requests. What this means is that when the server gets busy, it spins up more processes. So PHP FPM will spin up a few processes. Right now, I believe it just has a setting of two to start. And every time it gets new web requests, it spins up a new process to handle that web request. So we can have multiple processes and they can handle multiple web requests simultaneously, but we do have a limit because you can't have too many going on at the same time or you'll eat up too many resources on the system. So each process can handle multiple requests, but only one at a time in serial. So to get some parallelism so it can handle multiple at a time, you spin up multiple processes. So what happens is it spins up a process that handles one request and then gets the next request and the next request and handles that. And you might have something like five processes doing that. So in our process management, it sets a dynamic, so it'll spin some up and spin some down automatically. We see that our max number of children is five. Now right now we only have two because two we're gonna see is the number that just start when the server is idle. These are the two right here. 
so the maximum number of children that is going to be allowed to be created here is five. The start servers is two, right? So when the PHP FPM starts, it has two on standby just ready to accept new requests. And it starts them up and has them on standby because starting up a new process is a bit of an expensive operation. So having some on standby and ready is a way to reduce that response time to the first request that comes in. And then we have spare servers. So spare servers is uh, processes that are not taking any new requests, but are sitting there and ready to if more traffic comes in. And we can have a number of min spare servers and a number of maximum spare servers. And none of these can exceed the total number of max children. And then the last thing here I like to set is the number of max requests. So we can define how many requests a process will handle before killing itself, in which case PHP FPM then restarts a process. So I can say the max process, and I usually set this to something like 1,000. So after 1,000 requests, PHP FPM will kill that process that has handled 1,000, and it will restart a new process to handle that, which is good for uh, memory leaks in third-party libraries, which I don't think are really common, but I'd like to have that anyway. So. Um, I usually increase these because this is actually a small amount. So let's do a quick calculation here. I'm going to do free-m, and we have a one gigabyte server here. It's actually a little less, but effectively this is a one gigabyte server. I'm going to say PHP can take about half of that, so 512 megabytes, and then the rest of the remaining, uh, I'll say, will be allocated to anything else running. So queue workers and my SQL and all that good stuff. So what I can say is that 512 megabytes of available memory, and let's pretend my server or my PHP application takes about 40 megabytes per process, then I'm willing to generate about 12, and I'll do a conservative estimate here, uh, 12 max processes. So I'm just gonna increase this to about 10. I like being a little bit conservative because 10 processes could still eat up more memory, especially if it talks to MySQL, and if MySQL's on the same server, that eats up a bunch of RAM. So I do like to bump up the number of max children, but not too, too much. So what this is gonna do is allow us to handle more PHP requests at the same time. Of course, you have to watch your server statistics to make sure we don't bottleneck on CPU or RAM. You might hit one or the other first, depending on how memory intensive is, depending on how much MySQL is getting used and all that kind of good stuff. I'll pump up the start servers to four, number of spare servers to two, and I'm kind of making these up. I just like having a little bit more than the default. Max number of spare servers, I'll set to four as well. And this, I changed to a thousand, but I didn't save that. So the PM max request will set to a thousand. And that's really all the changes I typically like to make here. Although one last thing I'll show you is that you can actually override php.ini settings in here as well. Anything you set here for a php.ini value will actually override what's in php.ini for FPM, which is kind of a neat thing if you need to do some uh, php.ini configuration per resource pool if for some reason you're making multiple resource pools, and you can. And I'm just gonna do sudo service php7 fpm restart again. So you can see we have four start servers now, so those changes are taking effect. So our server is able to handle some more traffic that way, probably. You do have to keep track of things like your uh, memory usage and the CPU usage at any time. So that's it, that's all I wanted to cover. I just wanted to make sure you know about the pool configuration. It's very important when you are grappling with issues like permissions. So you know where to look to see where PHP FPM is listening, and so you know where to look to see what user is running PHP. And when that empowers you to be able to set permissions correctly and as you would expect, like we saw with our My App, where I saw that PHP was running as user and group data, and I was able to change directories that Laravel needs to write to accordingly to avoid permission-based errors. So the next video, I'm gonna show you a more Forge-like setup where we tweak PHP FPM and make an application user, like the user Forge that you get on Forge servers, to make dealing with permissions easier.